Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, here with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from EMC World 2012 in Las Vegas. Uh, find uh, the, the, the smartest and uh, brightest guests that we can and uh, extract the signal from the noise. And joining me is a rock star CIO. Tony Vaden with American Tire Distributors, uh, and uh, I've, I've talked to a bunch of people at EMC, and they, they said that you know this should be one of the highlights of uh, the end users that we have at the show. So Tony, first time on theCUBE, welcome. Yes, yes sir, thank you very much. So uh, you are a CIO, and could you tell us a little bit about uh, kind of the, the role and scope of your function and a little bit about your company? Sure, um, I am the CIO, and I ultimately, as you would imagine, have uh, ultimate responsibility for all of IT. Um, we are an independent tire uh, distribution company based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we basically have service independent tire dealers, big box retailers, car dealer networks, uh, and basically a, a large plethora across the U.S. for redistribution models. Right. Yep, and you, you can just talk right to me, oh, Tony. Sorry. So, <laughs> absolutely no. Okay. So, uh, big piece of, of your environment is, is, is virtualized. If, if I heard correctly from uh, the prep document I had, they said you're like 99% virtualized? Yeah, well you basically have only two small environments left that okay. we have virtualized. So how many applications do you have in your portfolio and can you give us a little bit of uh, the, the scope? Uh, we probably have 30, 40 applications. We have a, a core Oracle eBusiness Suite is really the core process or the application that runs our technology footprint. Um, we have a lot of ancillary applications that run around that, as far as like CRM, uh, different data nodes. We have a hybrid e-commerce platform that integrates well. We do a large part of our business from an online perspective. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we have probably, I would guess, a portfolio that's fairly standard to most companies. Okay, so, so uh, 30 applications, what, what's the size of your VM farm? Uh, we have about 500 VMs okay. on about 75 physical nodes. Okay, and uh, what, what's the underlying infrastructure? Uh, it's an HPC class blade system okay. uh, running on two VNX uh, storage arrays and a Cisco Nexus uh, kind of a clear uh, integration point within the networking. Okay, so w when we talk with our community about kind of the, the journey toward mi virtualizing mission critical applications, you know, Oracle is one of the, the kind of the hot button topics. Right. Uh, there, there's uh, kind of the support challenges sometimes, there's licensing things. Uh, can you share with us a little bit about what your experience has been? Absolutely, uh, we started in the virtualization path many years ago. Um, and you know, we looked at this as a, a journey, a, you, and really had to put a strategy together uh, to be successful. Uh, it's, it's like any other roadmap. Uh, if you really don't commit, uh, and I think one of the things I've heard used here uh, at the summit was no U-turns. So you basically, you got to put that roadmap together and, and stick with it. And I think once you start the virtualization story and you really test, you realize it's, it's not that hard. You know, I don't oversimplify it, but you know, the application stack is really working with each of your partners from a technology, uh, a support, and a licensing perspective uh, is really a core to what we were successful with, and it's having proactive discussions. I know there's a lot of discussions around with Oracle support, with Microsoft support, with any of the technology providers, but at the end of the day, once you create that relationship and you discuss what you're trying to achieve, they all support me. Okay, great, so it sounds like it's really just a partnering with uh, yes. the, your, your suppliers there. Did, did you have to fight for some of these uh, solutions? Uh, or? Initially, okay. I, you know, I think over the years, and again, you go back three, four, five years in the storyboard for this early on, it was like nobody wanted to. Right. So you actually had, we had to feel like we had to prove to the provider that it would work. Uh, and over the years, as they all, almost everybody's now created their own virtualization strategy and story, it's kind of hard to say no because they do it themselves. Okay, uh, so one of the, the, the things that doesn't get talked about a lot is who helps kind of with the, the deployment and putting things together. I would think services would have to be pretty heavily involved uh, for virtualizing some of those environments. So, you know, who, who, who's kind of your partner along that? Is that directly with EMC or uh, you know, how, how did you kind of put together the architecture and uh, the blueprints to, to do what you're doing? Uh, that's a very good question. I mean, over the years, depending on uh, which portion of the technology stack, we've used partners or we've used integration teams, we've used just resellers or VARs that's been successful. We use a company in, in the Charlotte, North Carolina area called Vero. Yeah. from the underlying virtualization you stack. You said Vero, right? Vero, yes. Yeah, do, are, um, do, you, do you attend their Vero Madness conference then? I have not, uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not allowed out of the office that much. I would, I'm stuck there doing the strategy work, but the, my team has uh, done a lot of work and interface with them, uh, and, and really creating that core virtual structure. You know, early on it was virtual farms, now virtual clusters, and how we built that, the dynamic nature of what we've done uh, was successful. You know, and I think if you, look at the architecture and the pieces that make this successful. The OS, 
going to an open source like a Linux as opposed right. to a proprietary Linux, I'm sorry, a Unix platform, yeah. moving to the x86 architecture. Right. Uh, one of the things that we talked with Oracle very early on was, how do you develop your code? What platform do you use? They use a Linux stack. They use an x86 stack. So, and again, that was early on yeah. in our story. That made sense for us to gravitate, and that's been a huge part of our success. Uh, we've also used a company called House of Brick. Yeah. That is what I would consider uh, an expert in the field of Oracle virtualization. Yeah, yeah. Actually, so we held a community call uh, with uh, with Wikibon with House of Brick. Uh -huh. We found that they are, uh, you know, definitely on the, on the leading edge of virtualizing Oracle, so right. not surprised to hear them come on. Uh, they've, they've been a great contributor to kind of sharing that information, blazing some of the, uh, the, the paths to show other people how to yep. do that. So, uh, you know, sounds that, you know, it's, it's still kind of early days for a lot of people in that Oracle environment, but uh, we, we love the proof points to be able to show that that can be done. Um, Wondering if we could talk about your backup environment a little bit and how, how that plays into your, your virtualization journey. We found you know, virtualization you know, broke some of the underlying processes. Um, you know, is there anything you can share uh, with, with to your peers on uh, you know, how virtualization affected your backup environment and what, what you've done there? Sure, and, and I would, if you don't mind, probably add to that in yeah. putting DR and high availability all in yeah, the same bucket. Yeah, please, absolutely. I mean, certainly using Veritas and data domain as a way to back up our data you know, all solid state. We eliminated tape from our uh, infrastructure probably almost three years ago. Uh, and if you think about the amount of data and trying to recover for something like tape, it's impossible. And when you get into the to petabyte range of storage, even if you're in, you know, even a half a, ter a half petabyte or even less, tape is just impractical anymore. Uh, and so when we sat down with EMC and their, their portfolio of the companies that they've now knitted together, it works very well. Yeah. So we use recovery point between two VNXs to copy immediately or on the fly, real-time data between our locations, and we actually back up in our data center, our secondary data center. So from a real-time perspective, we not only have that ability to track transactions from these, our, distribu our data center, our primary data center to our backup data center, uh, but we also do real-time backups from that perspective as well. Great, so uh, you're 99% virtualized, you yes. know, what, what, what's the outlier? Well, there's two. Uh, we actually have one production rack environment we haven't yep. virtualized. Well, let me rephrase that, we haven't put in production. Uh, we have uh, two rack environments that we have in production. One is virtualized, mm -hmm. running very smoothly. Okay. Uh, the second one is just a matter of timing for us. Uh, we had a lot of workload on our plate. We have virtualized the rack in our de secondary data center. It's running, we do all our dev and test. Uh, so all our tr heavy transactional testing volume is done in a rack environment. Uh, and honestly, it's just a little bit of a timing perspective. We'll probably do that the latter part of this year. And we have one BI instance, so just from a volume of, again, timing, workload, we just haven't got to it yet. But we, okay. will, 100%, we will be 100%. Yeah, so, so I'm wondering in the, the journey that you've gone through, uh, was there anything kind of organizationally internal, there's a lot of times some kind of internal politics that you yeah, have to sort out. Uh, anything that, that you learned along the way that you might uh, tell people to look out for? Uh, you know, I think that depends on your company and your team makeup. I think I had the, call it luxury, of having a great staff that embraced it from the very beginning. Even the application development team, when you showed them the ability to spin up a virtual instance and you know expand it or move it uh, and do that very dynamically, you didn't have to wait for a long provision time, you didn't have to get in a queue for a physical server, mm -hmm. you didn't have to be told, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have the server this week, you've got to wait for six months or two weeks or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it was actually a fairly easy story okay, for us. So, 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 great point. Have you done any quantification on kind of your time to market for your applications and, and moving those out? Well, you know what I would say at this point is storage provisioning, server provisioning is almost a non-equation in our process. That's great. You know, you really, you know, even we have a fairly consistent PMO process. Uh, we use toll gates as how we deploy applications or business solutions. You know, there's a checklist from each toll gate of how we deploy, there's a checkoff portion of what we do uh, that's taken care of in the process, but it's usually a non-event from our perspective. Okay, great, so uh, this is just <laughs> trying to see, uh, you know, is there anything uh, else in your environment that we haven't touched on that uh, you think would uh, be something your peers should learn? Well, you know, again, I go back to, um, I think there's a lot of ambiguity out there or you know, a lot of the cloud discussion yeah. probably should come into play. What is your strategy? You know, we've created what we would consider an internal cloud solution. Right. Uh, we are hybrid, 
we have taken some of our applications to the cloud, like CRM or payroll or HRIS or several of those, which makes sense for us to do. But we also, from a core competency and what we've kept internally, have created that internal cloud. So we can change from dynamic nature of how we position the servers, the storage, and all that stuff to be successful. And to me, the best advice I would give is you need to put a strategy together, and it is virtual, and it is cloud, and it's real. Just okay. to focus on that. Well, 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 well Tony, uh, you know, uh, got a little sticker here that said, I did, uh, it looks like you're getting some uh, recognition for yes. sharing with your peers. Uh, we definitely at Wikibon and Silicon Angle appreciate you coming to share with our community about all here. the things that you've learned. Uh, thank you for coming on theCUBE, and uh, we will be right back after this uh, brief break.